we're talking about buying a stock versus buying a call option in a previous video and here I want to talk about the case where you short sell a stock versus buying a put option or being long a put option it's the it's um in some ways it's the opposite case of buying the the call and buying the stock when you short a stock you're expecting the price to go down that is you sell it at a higher price and you hope to buy it back at a lower price. So let me let me try and draw on a little picture here of what the payoff diagram looks like. It's going to be downward sloping. Should have a slope of minus one. I don't know if I've actually done a good job of that, but it and I'm gonna put an arrow on this because there's really no limit to how high the price of the stock can go. Remember when you short sell something, you're selling it at a certain price and then you hope to buy it back at a lower price. So just let's make it easy on ourselves. Let's put a number in here and let's say you short sell the stock for 100. Well, what's the most money you can make? The most money you can make or the most profit you can make is $100, right? You sell it for 100, the stock becomes worthless and then you buy it back essentially for zero. When you short, short sell, you're borrowing shares of something you don't own, you sell it and then you buy it back hopefully at a lower price. Of course if the price goes up you're in big trouble. If the price goes to 110 you're going to buy it for a, you, you you sold it for 100 you're gonna have to buy it back for 110 you're gonna lose ten dollars a share. And that brings in what we call a put option. A put option is the case again like a call option it gives you the right but not the legal obligation if you own the option. In this case, to sell the stock for $100. So your payoff is going to look like this. At any price above 100, you simply don't use it. So, so you're going to get this flat line right here. In fact, let me see if I can change the color there to something else, make it blue. And you don't use it because if you owned the shares of stock, why would you sell them for a hundred when you could sell them for a higher price, like a hundred and ten? Now, for every dollar it falls below a hundred, you make a dollar. So you're going to get something that looks like this, going all the way up to this profit axis. And again, you get this sort of hockey stick looking thing, where the difference here is the premium. Okay and I don't know if I drew it exactly right, but this vertical distance between the red line and the blue line should be the same as this distance between the yellow line and the blue line. This is the premium you pay. This is how much you're paying for the privilege of being able to dump the stock on somebody at $100 a share, even if it's selling for less than 100 So let's take a numerical example here. Suppose the price of the stock falls to, well, let's for, first thing we should find is the break-even point. So let's say that you paid $4 for this premium. Then the break-even point is going to be what? The stock has to fall enough, remember this is 100 you sold it at, it has to fall enough so that you cover that $4 loss. So it has to fall to 96 a share. So break even here is 96. Okay. That means that the maximum profit you can make is 96. All right. The best the best that can happen here is you sold it for 100 and you buy it back for nothing. Now, what happens if the price of the stock falls to $90 a share? All right. And this is stuff is not drawn to scale. But let's say it falls to 90, then what's our, what's, what are our different profits going to be? Well, let's draw a line up here to both of these, and let's draw a cross. Again, not drawn exactly to scale, but in the first, in the case of shorting the stock, your profit would be, certainly not drawn to scale, your profit would be $10.
Why? Because you sold it at 100, you buy it back for 90. Now, what happens if you've used the put option instead? You sold it for 100, you bought it for 90, that's a $10 profit, minus the $4 you paid in a premium, so your profit is going to be $6. So you can see that there's, there's, um, you're not going to make as much money using a put option as you do shorting. But let's look at the upside here. Let's suppose the stock price goes to 110. So it goes up to 110. And let me pick a different color here. If the price goes to 110, if you've if you've shorted the stock, your loss is going to be what? You sold it at a, you sold it at 100. You had to buy it back at 110. You're going to lose 10 dollars. But if you have the put option, you're going to only lose the 4 dollar premium. So that's the real secret. That's one of the nice things about using options. If you own an option, it limits your downside. So let me let me say that here. In the case of the put, your losses are limited, limited losses, and your profit is also limited. It's limited to the fact that the price of the stock can only fall to zero. If you short, you have limited possible profit, right? You can only make $100 in this example, but you have unlimited possible losses or unlimited liability. Because the price of the stock could go to anything. If you sold it short at 100, you might have to buy it back for 500 or 1,000 or 10,000. So you can lose an awful lot of money. Now, that's probably not going to happen because you'll get a margin call from your broker and you'll either have to put up more money or they'll close out your position. But you can see that if, you're, if you think the stock price is going to go down, you have your choice. You can short the stock or you can buy a put option. Okay? A put option is a, is a safer bet. It can be costly because in the case of shorting, as in the case of using an option, options expire. So if you want to maintain this position, once it expires, you're going to have to buy another one. It's much like insurance. You may have had an auto insurance policy with the same company for 20 years and never had an accident. If all of a sudden you forget to renew your policy and you get in an accident in the 21st year, well, they don't pay because you don't have a policy with them anymore. So you have to keep renewing your your insurance policy, just like you have to keep buying another put option when it expires. So it can get very costly. You know, it only seems like $4 a share, but you might have to do this again and again and again and again and again, and you still may not make any money. But as I mentioned in the, in the video about buying the stock versus buying the call option, combining puts and call options and stock purchases and shorting the stock can, you can create all kinds of different payoff pictures. Pictures you can hedge, you can hedge your risk. You can um, create payoffs where you make money if it goes up a little, but lose almost nothing if it goes down, or you make money if it stays the same. There's a lot of different things you can do using options.